أشهد أن لا إله إلا الله وأشهد أن محمدا عبده ورسوله رسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم emphasized on us that we should do it and we should do it regularly we should be consistent in doing it don't miss it as he advised سيدنا عبد الله بن عمرو بن العاص رضي الله عنه that لا تكن مثل فلان don't be like that person فَإِنَّهُ كَانَ يَقُومُ اللَّيْلِ فَتَرَكَ قِيَامُ اللَّيْلِ That he used to do Qiyam al-Layl, then he stopped. Once the person has done Qiyam al-Layl, finished Salat al-Witr, and before that, how many rak'ahs to perform of Salat al-Tahajjud? It's a long subject in the light of a hadith. But I would just explain it very briefly enough so that we can inshallah practice it as per the sunnah of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Generally Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam used to perform eight raka'ah of salat al-tahajjud. This was his normal habit. Eight raka'ahs of tahajjud and three raka'ahs of wither that is eleven raka'ahs. Now when you look into the hadith, there will be a hadith that say that Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam performed seven rak'ahs. Some say he performed eleven rak'ahs. Some say nine rak'ahs. Some say thirteen rak'ahs. Some hadith say fifteen rak'ahs. Some hadith say seventeen rak'ahs. And all of those, these are authentic hadith that Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam performed these many rakahs. Very briefly and quickly so that we can understand why there is different narrations and different numbers mentioned in the hadith. Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, as I said, generally he would perform eight rakahs and three with her. So that's 11 rakahs. And as we talked about it earlier, that when he would start Qiyam al-Layl, Salat al-Tahajjud, he would perform two short rak'ahs. So how many rak'ahs? If we include these two short rak'ahs, how many rak'ahs did we get now? 13 rak'ahs. Then, sometimes, he used to perform, after Salat al-Witr, he would perform two rak'ahs sitting down. So how many rak'ahs did we get? 15 rak'ahs. So if you include these two rak'ahs also, that he would be doing sitting down, that will be... 15 rak'ahs. Then, right after the Adhan of Fajr, he used to perform two sunnahs. So that is 17 rak'ahs. So it all depends on which rak'ahs the Sahabi is counting. But, this did not include the 7 rak'ahs or the 9 rak'ahs. Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, in his old age, in the last days of his life, he cut those rak'ahs short, which means he would, the qira'ah will be shorter too, and the number of rak'ahs went down also. So sometime Prophet ﷺ would perform four rak'ah of Salat al-Tahajjud because standing and sitting was difficult. And as we studied yesterday, that he would do, he would uh, be doing it sitting down, and then before the ruku, 30 or 40 ayahs before the ruku, he will stand up, and then he will go into the ruku and sujood. So now, in that situation, Prophet ﷺ cut the number of rak'ahs down so that he doesn't have to stand up and sit down too often. So four rak'ah of Salat al-Tahajjud and then three rak'ahs of Salat al-Witr. That is seven rak'ahs. Sometime he would perform six rak'ahs of Salat al-Tahajjud and three rak'ahs of Salat al-Witr. So those are nine rak'ahs. So as we said, generally, the general habit was eight rak'ahs of Salat al-Tahajjud and three rak'ahs of Salat al-Witr. As I said, Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam used to start with two short rak'ahs and after Salat al-Witr, sometime he would perform two rak'ahs sitting down. Now, is it sunnah to perform those rak'ahs sitting down? Sometime we see people performing Two rak'ahs sitting down after Isha, after Wither. 
so that we can understand the ruling about it. One is, Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam told us that performing any salah, sitting down, will cut the reward into half. So if you perform two rak'ahs, you get the reward of a rak'ah. But still he performed the two rak'ahs sitting down, as we discussed a few days back, for people like me that find it difficult to get up and perform Salat al-Tahajjud, to stand up and do Salat al-Tahajjud, I said, sit on your couch and do it. Sit on the floor and do it. This is so that we don't miss it all together. So at least we are doing it, although we are not getting the full reward of the two rak'ahs, but at least we are not missing it. Now, Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, since he did it sitting down, Imam Nawawi rahimahullah says that he didn't do it sitting down all the time. Only sometime he would sit down for those two rak'ahs. So if a person sometime will sit down and perform those rak'ahs after uh, Salatul Witr perform them sitting down, although the rule is the reward will be cut into half, but inshallah the reward of following the sunnah will be much greater than that. So we should do that occasionally. Not a permanent habit, but occasionally we should perform the three, two rak'ahs sitting down after Salatul Witr with the intention of following those sunnahs. After finishing in, in Salatul Witr, and here another thing before I mention the surahs of Salatul Witr. When we look into the hadith that talk about Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam's tahajjud, as we just said, nine, seven rak'ahs, nine rak'ahs, 11 rak'ahs, 13 rak'ahs, 15, 17. But in some of the ahadith, the word tahajjud is not used, not even qiyamul layl. In fact, the wording that is used for all of these rak'ahs combined be it 5, 7, 11, 13, 15, the word that is used for it is Salatul Witr. That this was the Witr of Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. This leads us to another very, very lengthy topic that of course is uh, muhaddisin and uh, scholars uh, that are in that field, they learn, they study, they talk about this. But I just wanted to point it out that sometime if you open a book of hadith and you see the word wither with nine rak'ahs, 11 rak'ahs, 13 rak'ahs, don't be confused because Sahaba Ridwanullahi Ali Majma'een used to combine all of it and consider all of it as one wither. Although Prophet Sallallahu is performing it in twos. Sometime he may perform four and four and three, but generally in twos and then three wither. But they would combine them and they would just name all of them Salatul Witr. So there should be no confusion. And the thing that would explain, the thing that will explain this very clearly is all the ahadis, all the ahadis, no exception, that talk about Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam reciting uh, this Masnoon surahs that are to be recited in Salatul Witr. And they all talk about, in the first rak'ah, Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam recited Surah Al-A'la. Sabbih isma rabbika al-A'la. In the second rak'ah, he recited, Qul ya yuhul kafirun. In the third rak'ah, he recited, Qul huwa Allahu ahad. Now, we just see that there were 11 rak'ahs of Mutr. But the hadith is saying, first rak'ah, he recited, Sabbih isma, second, Qul ya yuhul kafirun, third, Qul huwa Allahu ahad. So what happened to the remaining rak'ahs? So this tells us, that his wither was three rakahs. And this is, was the general habit of Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. These were the surahs that he would recite. <clears throat> I don't want to change the topic, but I just want to point out a few things in between too. These three surahs, Sabbih isma rabbika ala Qul ya yuhal kafirun, and Qul huwa Allahu ahad we find that Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam reciting them very frequently. In Salatul Jum'ah, he's reciting, Sabbih isma rabbika al-A'la. In Salatul Eid, he's reciting, Sabbih isma rabbika al-A'la. Every day in Witr, he's reciting, Sabbih isma rabbika al-A'la. And there is a hadith that says that there was a time when Eid and Jum'ah, they both were on the same day, which means Eid was on the day of Jum'ah, Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam recited Sabbih Isma and Halataka Hadith al in both, in Jum'ah and Eid. 
did we ever ask our souls what is so important about Surah Al-A'la, Sabbihisma Rabbika Al-A'la, that he's repeating it so many times and in all of these important prayers? And then especially in the largest congregations, Jum'ah and Eid, he's reciting Sabbihisma Rabbika Al-A'la. It's a question that we need to ask ourselves. Same thing, قُلْ يَا يُهَا الْكَافِرُونَ إِنْ قُلْ هُوَ اللَّهُ أَحَدٍ there are so many hadith that talk about Prophet ﷺ reciting these two surahs in, salah, in the sunnahs of Fajr. Reciting them in the sunnahs of Maghrib. In the sunnahs after Isha. And when he's performing the two short raka'ahs before, he would start the long raka'ahs of the hajjud. قُلْ يَا الْكَافِرُونَ قُلْ هُوَ What's very important about these two surahs? Why is he repeatedly reciting them? It tells us something. And this is something that we really need to look into. When a person finishes Salatul Witr, then it is Masnoon, it was Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam's habit that he used to say Subhan al Malik al Quddus three times. The first two times he will say it a little slow Subhan al Malik al Quddus, Subhan al Malik al Quddus. And the third time he would Stretch it and say it louder. Subhan al Malik al Quddus. He would stretch it the third time. It is also part of the Sunnah that when one of the two people in the house, which means any of the husband or the wife, wakes up for Salatul Tahajjud to wake the other person up also. Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam made dua of Rahmah. The hadith is in Sunan Abi Dawood. Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, Rahim Allah imra'an qama min al-layni fasalla. May Allah have a mercy on a person who would get up during the night time and perform salah wa aiqaza zawjah and wakes his wife up. Fa'in abat nadaha ala wajhiha al-ma. If she refused to wake up, he sprinkles water on her face. Wa rahim Allah imra'an qama min al-layni fasalla. May Allah have rahma, mercy on a woman who gets up during the night time and performs salat al-tahajjad. وَأَيْقَزَتْ زَوْجَهَا And she wakes her husband up. فَإِنْ أَبَا نَضَحَتْ عَلَى وَجْهِهِ الْمَاءِ If he refuses to wake up, she sprinkles water on his face. So, this is something that we learn in the hadith. It's, this is what family is really in our sharia, in our deen. With a little, I normally add a short note after this, that she sprinkles the water on his face without getting slapped. It was Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam's habit that if for any reason he was not able to perform Qiyamul Layl, Salatul Tahajjud during the night, then the hadith in Sahih Muslim that Aisha radiallahu anha says, Kana idha ghalabahu nawmun aw waja'un an Qiyamul Layl. If for some reason he, was, he, he slept over or he was sick and could not perform Salatul Tahajjud, then he used to perform it in the morning would perform 12 rak'ahs before the time of zawal. So before zawal, he used to make up for what he has missed for qiyam al-layl. Sometimes we even ask questions that should we miss the faraz, should we make up for the faraz or not? Should we make up for the sunnahs or not? Here Prophet ﷺ is making up for salat al-tahajjud and teaching us that. The basic thing he's teaching us here is that a habit, that when you are of a habit of doing something, then don't give it up. Don't give it up. You don't allow your nafs to play these tricks with you that today you are sick. Say to your nafs, okay, you are sick now. In the morning you will be better, inshallah. So before you go to work, you have to pray 12 rakahs. Once we do this to ourselves, then inshallah our nafs will tell us, you know, why don't you do four before you go to sleep? Rather than doing 12 in the morning. And maybe you remember the well-known story of Sayyidina Muawiyah radiallahu anhu, that once he overslept and did not perform Salat al-Tahajjud. A person who's used to Tahajjud never misses Fajr. When we oversleep, we miss Fajr. But a person who's used to Tahajjud, if he would oversleep, he would miss Tahajjud, not Fajr. So, Muawiyah radiallahu anhu missed Salat al-Tahajjud one of the nights. 
Throughout the day he cried before Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that, Ya Allah, I must have done something wrong that you didn't allow me to stand up before you and get, get up and do my tahajjud and recite Quran. Of course, when a person misses something of such importance and something that he really loves, something that he, makes, makes, that he feels it makes my day, and this is really what it allows me to do whatever I'm doing throughout the day, and today I missed it. So he's crying throughout the day, and they say next morning, next night, before his time of waking up, he finds someone is shaking him and waking him up. He woke up, there is a man that is waking him up. So he looked around, he said, who are you? He said, wake up, perform talaih tahajjud. But who are you? He said, I'm shaitan. You are supposed to make me sleep, not wake me up. He said, no, yesterday you cried so much, you got more reward. For people like you, you better get up and do tahajjud. This is when we really treat our nafs. Al-Hasan al-Bisr, rahimahullah, once he came home, he was extremely tired. So, he says, he talks to his nafs. You don't want to pray tahajjud today? And of course, the feeling from inside, no, I'm so tired, really, so difficult to get up and perform tahajjud. He said, okay, so today I'm going to give you a break. No tahajjud tonight, but I won't let you sleep either. He said in one of the corners, that kept on making, making the dhikr of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala throughout the night until fajr. He said, this is how my nafs next day will allow me to pray tahajjud. Otherwise, if I will listen to my nafs, the next day my nafs say, again, you're tired today, again today, and you need to rest, have some more rest. What, what is it that normally we say to ourselves when we miss Salat al-Tahajjud? We say, you know, tomorrow we have a lot of work to do. Tomorrow is a busy day. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, when he ordered Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam to do Salat al-Tahajjud in Quran, he told him the same reason for doing Tahajjud. The reason that we use for not doing Tahajjud, Allah told him the same reason for doing Tahajjud. In Surah Al-Muzzammil, when Allah said to him, and at the end Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, Why I'm telling you stand for such a long time in Salat al-Tahajjud? He said, because, Inna laka fin nahari sabhan tabila. And what is sabhan? Shughlan tabila. You have a lot of work to do during the daytime. So you have a busy day. So during the day you won't have time for, so, for reading so much Quran and Nawafil. So now you better, better use the night for tahajjud. We say, I have a lot of work, so I better sleep. Allah is saying, you have a lot of work, so you better read. Inna laka fin nahari sabhan tawila is a very important message. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala give us tawfiq to be able to stand up before Rabbul Alameen in the darkness of the night and perform salah and recite Quran recite these long rak'ahs and be able to enjoy the recitation of Qur'an between us and Rabbul Alameen subhanahu wa ta'ala. Sometime we are in ruku'ah, sometime we are in sujood, sometime we are shedding our tears before our Rabb subhanahu wa ta'ala, that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala may have mercy on us and our families and in the work that we are doing. The question that we had the other day, what was the question? Why Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said to Nuh alayhi salatu wa salam, la tas'alni ma laysa laka bihi alim. So what will be the good answer? That is saying to him, don't ask me about something that you have no knowledge about. <coughs> this is so that we can understand before I explain it. Many times we depend a lot on dictionaries for understanding Qur'an. And this is really what many times gives us wrong information. For understanding Qur'an, knowing the language, knowing the grammar, all of this is important, but this is only a small portion of knowing the tafsir of the Qur'an. Tafsir is much beyond just knowing the language. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is not telling Nuh alayhi salatu was salam, don't ask me about something that you have no knowledge about. This is not what really he's telling him. And it will be interesting for those who are familiar with Urdu, that you look at the Urdu translations of this ayah and look at the English translations. For those who are familiar with Arabic, look at the Arabic tafasir, short tafasir that explain this word and look at the English translation. You would find that the English translation giving you a totally 
different meaning than what the other translations will give you. It's the lack of the language. It's the lack of the words in the language. That we don't have enough words that could really express the true Arabic meaning that Allah is telling us here. The word Sa'ala in Arabic language is used for two meanings, not for one meaning. What are the two meanings? Sa'ala yas'alu su'alan means to ask a question. Sa'ala yas'alu mas'alatan is to demand something. Sa'ala sa'ilun bi'adhabin waqi'. Now, when you sa'ala, if you know the language a little bit, when you ask, when you sa'ala, you don't ask B, you ask An. But here Allah says, sa'ala sa'ilun bi'adhabin. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is saying that what this person, who was another bin al-Haris, came to Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says what he did was totally wrong. If he came and asked about adab, so many sahaba asked also. Huzayfa radiallahu used to ask a lot of questions about the ending days and about adab and about jahannam and those things. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala was never upset. Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa was never upset. Why are they upset with another bin al-Haris? He is not asking about the adab. He's demanding. He's saying, why don't you bring the adab? So Allah says, Sa'ala sa'ilun. This, brain, this man is demanding the adab that is about to come. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is saying to Nuh alayhi salatu wasalam, don't demand something from me that you have no knowledge about. And now go back to those ayahs and you would see really it wasn't a question, it was a demand. Why? Pay attention to the ayahs. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is talking about Nuh alayhi salam talking to his son. Everyone is in the ark. Nuh alayhi salam is talking to his son and he's saying that, oh my son, come join us. And he said, no, no. I will go to the mountain and that will save me. Today no one can protect you from Allah's punishment except for those whom Allah will have his rahmah and mercy on. And a wave came between them. And he was drowned. The whole thing is done now, isn't it? Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, I said to the earth, now start swallowing the water. O cloud, you go away. The ark when and settled on the mountain Judi. Now Nuh السلام, is calling on his Rabb. Ya Rabb. Oh my Lord, my son was of my family. What is the question here? Is this a question? My son is of my family. Is this is a question? This is a statement. Your promise is supposed to be true. You always, your promise is always true. What was the question? It was a demand. Ya Allah, why was my son drowned? Why was he drowned if he was of my family? Allah says, no, don't demand things that you have no knowledge about. Because there is no question that is being asked. So here is the difference between question and demand. And sa'ala sa'ilun bi'adhabin waqa is a beautiful example of su'al being a demand. And sometimes Quran really presents these things in a very such a beautiful way. We didn't even go into the beauty of why the su'al, the word su'al is used over here, and why Nuh alayhi salatu wasalam was told that don't demand this thing, and what was the demand of Nuh alayhi salam, that's a, another thing by itself. But this reminds me of another ayah, which we recited in the 11th juz. قَالَ لَهُمْ مُوسَى قَالَ مُوسَى أَتَقُولُونَ لِلْحَقِّ Keep on translating the ayah with me. You know the simple wordings. قَالَ مُوسَى Everyone knows. Musa a.s. said, أَتَقُولُونَ لِلْحَقِّ Do you say about the truth? لَمَّا جَاءَكُمْ When the truth came to you. أَسِحْرٌ هَذَا Is this is a magic? 
So what did Musa alayhi salam say? Is he asking them or is he telling them? Qala Musa, ataquluna lil haq. Musa alayhi salam said to Bani Israel or to people of Fir'aun, ataquluna lil haq lamma jaakum. Are you saying about the truth once the truth has come to you? Asihrun hadha? Is this is a magic? Was this the statement of Musa alayhi salam? Is he this? This is what he asked. He's telling them. This is a question. This is not qala. This is sa'ala. So what is it that Musa alayhi salam told them? Maybe go back to the translations and look at some of the tafasir inshallah and try to figure out what is it that Musa alayhi salam told them that Allah is trying to tell us over here. Sallallahu ta'ala ala khayri khalqi Sayyidina wa nabiyina Muhammad wa ala alihi wa sahbihi ajma'in wa alhamdulillah أشهد أن لا إله إلا الله وأشهد أن محمدا عبده ورسوله